Good morning, um, Bill Fuentes uh, here again. We are going to do another class with the uh, machine operations here at Hartford Technical High School. Um, what we are going to do for this class is we're going to do the vertical band saw. The vertical band saw is one of the machines that is very important in the shop for doing projects and getting used to machine operations and the safe operations of that machine. What we're going to start off with, we're going to secure our tools. We're going to lay out the material. We're going to inspect our machine. We're going to cut the material file to size, deburr the cut material, clean the machines, and return the, the tools that we use. Over here, what I'd like to show you is this right now is not to scale. You're going to see that in a lot of the drawings if I put them up on the board so you could see what kind of measurements we need for both these pieces that we're going to do. Underneath there where it says not to scale, we usually put notes. And the notes are the little numbers in the parentheses. So if you see note number one, number one refers to the reference point of our angle that we're going to be cutting. Note number two is a 45 degree on both pieces. Note number three is steel material and four is aluminum. So the only thing that I did not put up there is the, uh, the allowance, what these measurements can be. Okay, before we get started, we want to make sure that we have straight edges on all the sides. So those are all going to be 90 degree, that's a given. From the 90 degree, we're going to get two 45s on the piece of material, one with the steel, which is going to measure one inch up and one inch in. And one inch, one and a half inches up and one and a half inches in for the aluminum piece. So the first thing that we're going to do is secure our tools. The tools that we are going to use here is very minimal. We have the file and the file, we'll get into the files maybe a little later in another class to say the difference of the files. We have a scribe and we have both pieces of metal. The only other tool that we are going to use in this operation is our combination square with the 90 degree, 45 degree head mounted on it. What we need to do is when we refer to our drawing that is on the board, we were looking at it a second, we'll go back there and, and explain a little bit more of uh, the measurements and what I'm talking about when I needed it, the uh, 45 degree angle cut. Like for instance, we use our marker to get a good position of where our angle is going to be cut. The only other thing that we need, if you notice there's one here and one here, the only other thing that we need is a reference point. So if you take a look up there and, and note number one when we go back to the drawing, you notice that the reference point is right here and here. We are using the 45 degree as the reference because that's the angle that we want. Now we do have another, um, the, the protractor head that fits on the combination square if the degree is not a 90 or a 45. If it's a different, like a 30 degree, we would have to use the protractor head. Right now, this is all we're going to need. Once we get our two pieces of metal and we secure the metal, then what we're going to do is we're going to color it in with the marker just enough that we need to see the angles. So this one is set at one inch by one inch with a 45 degree um, on it. This one is one and a half by one and a half with the 45 degree on it. Once you get those measurements, one and a half and the one and a half, if you mark the line that goes from one edge of that line to the other edge of the other one, 
Your 45 is set the way it is. On the drawing, if you notice the steel piece, these are cut pretty much to this size. So once you get the piece of material, then you're going to go ahead and make sure that you have the 90 degrees on four sides. What we're going to do to get that 90 degrees is the hand file, which we are going to do later to get our 45 degree also. On the aluminum piece, it's a little bit bigger. It's three inch by six and three eighths. And it's the same thing. We need to get the 90 degrees before we can get the other ones. The most important side is right here where you're measuring. This definitely has to be a 90 degree because that's what we're working with to get our 45. Same way with this one, you have to get this side 90 degree for sure. The other ones can always be obtained as we're doing the piece. Okay, so what we're doing is this is a machine that we're going to be using. This is a vertical band saw. The vertical band saw is because of the position that it's in. It's a vertical position. And there are some safety features that we need to go through so you understand how to keep safe. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to look on the inside. The reason why we do the inside is because that way once we close it, we could start the, the cutting operations and not have to stop. The one thing that you need to pay attention to is these access doors. If they are not closed, the bandsaw will not work. So if you look up here, this is an automatic safety switch. They're commonly referred to as a dead man switch. If this is open just a little bit, the machine will not work. It has to be closed and that depressed in. Down in the bottom portion of the machine, you also have a safety switch right here that needs to make sure that this is shut completely for it to operate. There are brushes that clean the blade. See these brushes right here? So we want to make sure that the inside is as clean as we can get it because once this gets filled up, it has a problem with the blade tracking. First thing completely. we do when we want to start this machine up is to make sure it's in uh, configuration to be able to cut what you're cutting. Right here is a locking mechanism for this arm. You got to loosen this up, make this go down till it's on the top of the piece of material, then you're going to bring it up about an eighth to a quarter inch. You don't want it way up here because the blade can move track and it can break and hurt somebody. So you want to make sure, again, touch the, the piece to the um, guide up about an eighth to a quarter inch. Right here, there are two guides. One guide comes across from the left side, the other guide comes across from the right side. These guides hold the blade in place for cutting. Now, when it cuts, this hose has air. The hose blows away any of the residue that's here that causes a problem with your cut. The other thing that I want you to notice here is the guards on the side for your protection. Also, if you get close to this, there's, if you get close to it, there's a possibility of getting yourself hurt really bad. So we'll get into that in a second to show you how we're going to cut it. What we have here that I want you to see, this is a guide for a 90 degree cut on the uh, piece of material. It follows this track. Once you loosen it up, it'll follow that track and you could use that guide to cut the piece of material. This goes all the way across as you're kneading. The second most important thing that we have 
This is what we call a push bar. You don't want to use your hands very much if you, if you don't have to. You could use the push bar. What I'm saying is you could use your hands to cut, but when it gets real close, you will set this in here and you will use the push bar manipulating it to cut it the way it needs to. Over on this side, once we get this set, once we get this set on this side, we have a light that goes on. We will put the light on so you can see what's happening, but the machine has to be running. The thing about this machine is the same as we talked about for our drill machines. You do not change the speed unless it's running. The size of material that you should be using to cut uh, this machine to cut should not be any more than three-eighths of an inch, depending on the type of material. You could go a little thicker for the aluminum because it's softer. You don't want to go very much thicker than, than a quarter inch, three-eighths of an inch with the steel. The speeds are governed by the thickness of the metal and the material. So we are going to use the speeds about the same as we were using for the drill presses. Steel between 80 and 200 RPMs, the aluminum between 200 and 400 RPMs. The difference when you're cutting on this machine is you got to let the blade do the work. Don't push hard. If you push hard, then it's going to stop the blade from doing its work. If we need to speed up this while we're cutting the aluminum, all we got to do is adjust the speed up. Up at the very top of the machine, you will notice a uh, digital readout. This will give you the speed. Once the machine's turned on, you'll see the speed and we can adjust it and I'll show you where to adjust the speed. The second one that I want, or second um, part that I want you to see is the start button. This is a start button, this is a stop button. Now, if there's a problem with the machine or something happens, this right here is called an e-stop. If this is not pulled out, the machine won't start. So if you need an emergency, all you need to do is hit the e-stop. If we look down here, this right here is a blade crimp. What that means is when you have to do a blade or make a blade in its own right, this is used to cut the blade. This portion of the vertical band saw, this is a welder and this is a grinder. So you're going to cut the blade, put it together, then you're going to grind the weld so that it goes through the guides. Down here at the bottom is a, is a speed adjustment. So once we turn on the machine, I'll show you how the vertical or the digital readout works. Once we make sure that the uh, access panels are shut, then what we're going to do is we're going to pull this e-stop so it's out and you just turn it clockwise and it pops out. Then we're going to go ahead and turn it on. If you notice, the digital readout here is going to give us a speed. Right now it's at 489 RPMs. So, down here is where we adjust it. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust it to about 200 RPM so that it